welcome uh, everybody for our uh, weekly insider as uh, usual. Uh, super happy to, and excited to be here today for great updates. Happy Thursday. And let's start and kicking it off with the engineering department. Luca, please start. Hello, everybody. Uh, Luca Cermelli from uh, Milano here, Italy. Uh, this is uh, the day after our live stream. It was a uh, Another great one, and uh, for the records, it was our community call number 42. I just thought about mentioning it since 42 is a very special number in the Zen ecosystem. Wow, and that's the last monthly one, then. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. From uh, the engineering side, uh, many activities are ongoing, uh, as we presented yesterday. In particular, we are pushing uh, on the remaining activities related to Alpha, both on, on, uh, on the SDK side as well as uh, on the main chain side, so the changes to support sidechains. More specifically, uh, number one, the sidechain test framework integration to our SDKs in progress. And this will be used to write complex workflows for the verification of multiple nodes synchronization in, uh, in case of forks. Uh, then the API for online configuration of node connections is in progress as well, and the goal here is the same. And uh, moreover, the simple uh, simple node sync tests in case of following the same chain were done and nodes are stable. Um, this is, uh, is, uh, is it from my side. Now, Alberto, if you would like to continue with your own updates, Oh, thank you, Luca. Okay, um, uh, regarding um, uh, the sidechain node synchronization, we are currently uh, reviewing uh, the current implementation and inspecting a possible issue that is related on how we communicate our syncing status to the connected peers. So in particular, in the node synchronization messages, we are using a locator-like approach I mean, like the one that you mentioned. But these uh, in sidechain can conflict with uh, some other assumptions that we made about the maximum length of forks. So um, still some uh, let me say discussion is needed, and tomorrow uh, we will proceed uh, the discussion with Alexander. And um, regarding the sidechain wallet implementation, uh, we uh, decided to extend uh, the information that we are going to index on the node. And this um, is made for retrieving uh, historical transaction in a, in a faster way. Uh, regarding the sapling issue, um, we are currently refining um, the identified possible solution. Uh, but still, uh, it still needed uh, some more analysis, especially on the fee rate update algorithm uh, for filtering the mempool. So we will provide uh, additional details um, in the next days. Uh, okay, coming back to on the side chain, um, we um, let me say uh, reviewed uh, the JSON serialization, and in particular, we changed uh, the library. Uh, for performing the, uh, the JSON serialization. Uh, and this was uh, made ex um, for, let me say, uh, for an easier usage uh, for Java developers. And just the last thing, uh, I got in Zencast.js, the pull request is ready. Uh, but uh, before approving it, it's just need uh, to ver uh, just needed to verify um, one test case, and after, uh, if if it is okay, uh, we will proceed with approving it and, and solve the issue. And everything from my side. Thank you, Thank Alberto. You. Yeah, you you can go on, uh, Ng. Thank you, Luca. Okay, so next one is Chronic on the infrastructure side. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so Alan and I, we are uh, working on testing the secure node tracking system further. So we've pretty much done a deep dive into the code term. And uh, the, the next update that we will deploy is, is pretty much 
our biggest update yet in terms of the amount of changes, uh, just because for the fact that we haven't done an update in, in a, quite a while. Uh, and um, the improvements have been talked about in, in the live stream already, but we are making good progress on uh, testing the, the code, um, figuring out if it, if it all works on testnet. And the plan is still to deploy one server on, uh, on mainnet uh, just to make sure that there is no negative impact on, on the running system. Uh, in terms of infrastructure on the tracking system, we did have an outage of uh, one of our servers in uh, in the start of the week. Uh, so that required us to shut that server down for a while. But uh, all of the downtimes and exceptions have been included, so no impact on, uh, on payments. And uh, that's Pretty much it. Passing back to Angie. Thank you, Kronik. And next one is Alan on the note side, if you would like to compliment. Kronik uh, pretty much covered everything that's going on at the moment. Uh, I think we're good there. Awesome. Thank you, Alan. And next one is Gustavo on the UX side. Hey, everyone. So I'll start with the help desk update. So on the last 30 days, we had uh, 4.8 customer satisfaction. I would say that's really good. So as for the, the metrics, we have uh, two items open, which two of them are waiting for support and 10 are waiting for the customer. So everything is smoothed on that end. On development side, Nathan is almost uh, done with the improvements of batch withdrawal. We will have uh, build to test these upcoming days. And uh, we're also working on a framework for stress testing and benchmarking sphere by Ryzen performance. So based on that results, we will work on refactoring some of the UATXO ATXO logic for performance gains on Sphere. And uh, on the web development side, uh, Twin been working on the HD website with uh, Jonas and uh, also working on the faucet for the gamification features. And uh, we are also working some in additional features to prevent bots on the faucet. And that's a mouse and cat game that we have to often revisit, unfortunately. And it's everything for our side at the moment. Thank, thanks, guys. Hey, Gustavo, I'm, I'm really interested in uh, getting a look at the HDE website and also the faucet gamification features. OK, we'll have a preview hopefully next week. Cool. Thank you, Gustavo. Next one is Rowan on the VD side. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so just a quick recap of yesterday's live stream announcements, just for anybody that wasn't there, didn't listen, hasn't heard yet. So the three we announced was Magnum Ledger integration for Zen. That's a way of tracking uh, and managing your Ledger funds with the Magnum Web Wallet. We also announced XPay Point of Sale, which is a way for Latin American merchants to start accepting Zen. And then we announced Acquainting, which is an online portfolio tracker and tax reporting tool. And then today's announcement, I'm just about to post a Twitter link in here. Um, so this is about the FCAS crypto disparity ratio. And what this basically is, is FCAS using their pretty sophisticated modeling system to look at different asset fundamentals versus the overall market cap of that particular asset in order to determine if the asset is overvalued or undervalued. Uh, and Horizon has been listed as the fourth most undervalued asset out of the thousands that FCAS are reviewing. Uh, so it's not ideal for us to be undervalued, obviously, but it's great to see it being recognized. Uh, and that will be going out across both Flipside Crypto and CoinMarketCap later on today. Uh, that's pretty much it for me at the moment. Everything else I'm working on, I can't really share in any detail. If anybody else from the BD team wants to jump in, please feel free to do so. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I had an interview with CryptoMC iTuber channel today about my presentation at Chainpoint 19, which is in October. And CryptoMC uh, channel is uh, quite a prominent channel in Eastern Europe region. And then I'm also preparing for my OKX Talks 2019 Tbilisi um, presentation, which will be on September 7th, the day after tomorrow. That's all from me. Back to you, Angie. 
Thank you, Vano. Um, okay, so next one is join us on the HDA uh, project. Ah, uh, I wasn't even muted. I hope you didn't hear me typing. Um, on the HD, um, yes, um, as Gustavo already said, um, I think next week sounds reasonable to provide a preview of um, what the website will look like and the basic functionality that we um, want to launch with. Um, I had a call earlier today with Rob um, talking about the Zen IP process. Um, I'll leave it to him to provide a little more detail on that. Um, but we're making progress here. Um, and other than that, that would be it for myself for today. Yeah. Just and a little more. Yeah. No, no. So I, we might as well just kind of fill everyone in on, on this now. So with the, the okay. Zen improvement proposal or Zen IP uh, process, you, you know, the whole point here is to make everything that we do more transparent and more and get more community involvement. And then also to, to really just create standardized processes so that ultimately we can decentralize the project. Um, and, and we can't do that if we're making all decisions kind of internally in, in a vacuum um, and then just presenting the, the decision. So the Zen IP is a really important kind of uh, step forward for us on the development side to be able to at least have a, a, like a, a tool or a process or system or whatnot where it's transparent of what we want to do. And anyone in the world um, can propose really anything for us to do. Uh, and we have a process for handling such proposals. And we want to also formalize the work that we do so that you know you guys or anyone in the world can see exactly what we have planned, uh, what we're working on, and so forth. So some quick decisions, because I want the goal here is to make this process go live, um, basically in combination with when the sidechain alpha goes live. Um, because I, I just think that that's such a nice milestone for us as a project and will probably get us more attention as a project. So as more eyes are coming to us and as more developers are getting interested in what we're doing because we're putting really truly innovative technology out there, I think it's also important to have a process to basically have these um, developers come and participate. So anyway, so the call with Jonas earlier was really just, there were a few key decisions that just have to be made to initialize this thing. And I think the, what we decided was, um, rather than kind of delay this and try to come up with something perfect, let's just initialize it and we'll do it in a very rational way that I think will not be controversial at all, but at least get something out there and then we can think about improving it. Um, so an important, there are a few important things here. Uh, we need to decide on basically the, the conversation platform. Uh, you know, so this, this process will reside on GitHub, but we'll have a conversation platform where people will actually have uh, hopefully very vigorous, lively discussion um, you know, it often have, happens in projects on forums and we'll be able to track and see this discussion over time. And, you know, we want a way to kind of funnel up really good ideas and have the community do this. And then we need to decide who will be the editors, basically the, the uh, you know, it, uh, editors of the process that, you know, choose, um, you know, basically, or the first point uh, of the process where if someone proposes something, the editors will be those that actually take the, the proposal and ultimately work it through the process for where, you know, results will be merged into our code base. And we just chose initially kind of the first set of editors who ultimately want to make this more, more decentralized. And we'll get into that maybe another time because one of the editors is kind of a community function that we want to grow that we'll talk about separately. And then there's a whole process. Um, so anyway, maybe now is not the time to go into detail on the process, but just to let you guys know, uh, we want it to move quickly so that we can do this in, in combination with um, the sidechain you know, uh, alpha release. That's yeah. it, I talked too much. No, that's perfect. And actually, because I, I like um, creating some some pressure, I would say that it is reasonable to have a first draft by the end of the month to be discussed. Love it. Absolutely love it. I, I agree with you. Let's create some pressure. Yep. And that will be it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Jonathan Rob. Okay, so next one is Lucy on the marketing side. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, so first of all, thank you uh, team for another successful live stream yesterday. Uh, so we announced this yesterday during the live stream. I will remind everyone again that yesterday's live stream was our last monthly live stream. 
So we have transitioned to quarterly live stream moving forward. Uh, and then our first uh, quarterly live stream update is the beginning of October. Uh, and then also we'll be sending out a newsletter that, um, next week highlighting some of the key updates that we covered during the live stream. Uh, we are also preparing for the next blog post about our uh, sidechain development. Uh, so this one will be about the interaction between sidechain nodes. So that will be a very interesting read. And then we uh, launched our Instagram and Medium account. Uh, currently, we are running a giveaway on Instagram uh, for anyone who follow Horizon Global on Instagram uh, and a tag a friend uh, to the giveaway post. So we'll get a chance to win some Zen. Uh, and we will randomly pick five winners. So uh, the giveaway ends on September the 18th. Uh, and then also, Erica is in the process of reorganizing all the channels on our Discord uh, server. So uh, we received some very helpful feedback from our community. Uh, Erica will use that to improve our Discord and uh, make the communication channels easier for everyone. Uh, so don't be surprised if you see some channels go missing, uh, as that will be a part of the improvement. Uh, that's it from me. Uh, Jonathan, do you have any updates? Hey, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Um, so I just want to say a big thanks to Lucy and Luca, who continue to do such an awesome job on, on the live stream, who do so much of that heavy lifting. Um, and in addition to that, I uh, wanted to let everybody know that we now have two complete PDFs for Academy, so the beginner and the advanced. And they look really amazing. So some of the things I'm brainstorming is how can we further enhance the reach aside from just medium. So curious if anyone on the team has ever worked with like um, creating an ebook and maybe putting it on Amazon as a free download. Um, that way, people searching Amazon for blockchain might be able to get this content. And every page says Horizon Academy. So it, it would be great uh, publicity for us as well. So if you do have experience with that, uh, please let me know. Uh, we'd love to hear what you think. Um, in terms of referral links, Madar has been doing a great job, um, and he's uh, secured referral links with almost six or seven websites, and I'll post the exact websites uh, right after I'm done speaking. And Vano, you mentioned that uh, you'll be speaking at two different locations. They probably have a website, and maybe they would be very willing to link back to Academy or to Horizon, so that might be a good lead. Um, and two more things, uh, tomorrow we'll be kicking off a, a call to figure out how we can best do some um, publicity around the Guatemala initiative uh, that Pistu and uh, Roth have been leading. And uh, lastly, Eric is working on creating a blog for uh, the, the FCAS kind of uh, basically saying that we're an undervalued coin and creating a blog to better understand why that is and how we can get some publicity around that too, especially if it's being pub published on coin mark market cap. Um, yeah, we, we just we in on that, just that you guys know are very well, well aware of the sensitivity. We just should never be promoting Zen as an investment ourselves. I mean, it's, it's one thing if an independent group like Flipside Crypto says we're mm -hmm. undervalued. Um, let's just make sure that we're very careful with that. I'm sure Dean is just itching to comment. <laughs> That's a good point. So maybe Dean will send you. I am. We'll, in maybe my we'll legal send you. Section, I'll, I'll I'll give a little uh, reminder. Yeah. So may, okay. So, so the the blog is not meant to promote the purchase of Zen. It's just meant to show how FCAS is rated and um, you know why our score is what it is. But what we can do is certainly send you the blog beforehand and just uh, get an okay or or a no from you. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, actually, I do have uh, some draft regarding the Guatemalan elections project because I've talked to with uh, Carlos, one of the leaders, so we, I can share that to you and like, maybe I can help you gather more insights about it. Yeah, that'd be great. Maybe uh, we can invite you to the call tomorrow and uh, if you're free to join. Yeah, sure. Okay, so next one is Dean. Huh, that was great timing. Uh, yeah, so... Um, Jonathan, so yeah, just to make make it uh, sort of reiterate what Rob said, uh, we as Zen Blockchain Foundation um, do not want to uh, discuss Zen in the context of it being an investment. So this is a technology, and um, we're you know uh, developers and and providers of an, a blockchain ecosystem. 
And uh, it is great for flip side crypto to talk about those things, but, but we should do our best to try and keep things on the technical level. Um, in other news, working, really enjoying um, my discussions with uh, Rob and Liat and Alberto, Maurizio and the technical team on understanding the intellectual property associated with the sidechain ecosystem. Um, so I've been enjoying that and studying that and uh, I, I think it will help us um, have a go-to-market strategy that, that will be most effective. Um, on the HR side, uh, I know that Leslie and Michelle have uh, met each other or are meeting today or yesterday. Um, so we're getting started with that process. So that's uh, exciting. And uh, lastly, working on a few agreements. Um, Rowan, let me know if we need to chat uh, about the last round. Um, and otherwise, that's it on the legal side. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Dean. And the next one would be Rob with the uh, closing part. Cool. Well, thank you, Angie. Uh, okay, so this is the first weekly insider of the month. So I figured out I would start by recapping our priorities this month. Um, so we've got the sidechain alpha um, going on some, some network that the public will have access to. Uh, I was flippantly calling it our testnet previously, but I actually heard some excellent um, discussions about why we, we would not do this on our current testnet, maybe some fork of it or, or whatnot, but uh, the guys will figure that out. But the point would be the tools will be made available and people will be able to tinker with what has been built uh, and we can showcase it publicly. Um, on the product side, Sphere Mobile, in my mind, is uh, such a, a, an important uh, product delivery for us. So we're going to be pushing hard on that. And the, the guys there on Gustavo's team are also working on the, the desktop ledger integration. Um, all important stuff on the product side to make Zen more usable. And community growth. So one thing that we need to really do, uh, at least a standard standardization of, is thinking about what is you know, estimating our community. Like what is the size of our community? What's its composition? Um, so that we can really um, plan some, some effective and aggressive growth strategies because uh, we know we need to significantly expand our, our community size uh, and not just the size of the community, because I, I mean, and many projects do this, they just go and buy, um, you know, basically, um, you know, whether it's Twitter followers or Telegram users or whatnot, that, that's pointless. Like, there's just no, no point in my mind to engage in that kind of activity. What we want is an actually very active um, and productive community that's contributing and, you know, helping with making a vibrant ecosystem. And then on the BD side, uh, we, we hear you guys. We've been hearing more commentary about uh, how we need to make Zen increasingly useful, uh, meaning you know, getting Zen into point-of-sale devices, getting Zen into different partnerships like the ones that Rowan just announced yesterday, things like accounting systems that make Zen now actually more useful to businesses. Um, you know, the BD team is continuing pushing hard on things like that, including, in my mind, one of the biggest ones would be an institution-grade custody solution. I think it's absolutely critical to get more institutions interested in the project. And then what um, you know, Jonas and I just previously talked about with the Zen IP uh, process, I, I think that's extremely important for us and one of our big priorities this month. And I like Jonas's aggressive deadline of trying to get something out there by the end of the month. Now, let's see. Another idea, maybe this would be a little bit controversial or whatnot, but I am I'm interested in, in investigating what a real commitment to being ASIC resistant would look like. What would it mean? Because it, in my mind, it goes well beyond um, just swapping out parameters on EchoHash. I mean, we could do that, but then what? Um, so there could be some consequences um, and consequences in a complex system. You know, it's, it's probably good to put a little thought into. But more importantly, how do you sustain this type of thing over time? And if we do make a commitment like this, which I think is important from a, a couple of different you know, angles I'll get into. But if we do make a commitment, we need to really understand the long-term effect of the commitment, understand why we would do it and what it would take uh, to actually be sustainable. So something like this, in my mind, means, you know, uh, just let's get practical about it and say we, we need to have ongoing R&D into different mining algorithms. We need to have someone that really has a pulse on you know, what is the latest and greatest or current state of the art in the market. This means we need to have coders that are 
you know, integrating the, um, innovations into our code base. This means we need to have resources to do code review, testing. This means we need to get it into our, our software release cycle. This is a non-trivial thing. So previously when we had talked about this, uh, when we, you know, we first learned publicly that there were um, you know, ASICs mining Equihash, uh, we, we made the decision at the time not to react to it. Uh, just We didn't have the resources because to do something like this, it does entail more. Now, I, I do think that there are some potential beneficial elements here. First and foremost, this is a commitment to decentralization, which is absolutely consistent with where we want to go long term. And, you know, right now with the sidechain system going live, we're going to be decentralizing the architecture, which is awesome. And then from there, we want to decentralize, you know, a whole bunch of other decision making, treasury allocation and so forth. But I think getting back to decentralizing new coin issuance is, in, in my mind, something very important we need to consider. And I also think GPU miners are just a key part of any cryptocurrency community. Um, and, you know, being able to make a commitment to a, a more decentralized mining process, I, I think, would be interesting. So anyway, at this point, it's, this is idea phase, but it's something that I, I think we should be considering. And then lastly, we've got a couple of minutes here. I will bring up the elephant in the room of we're looking at almost a $4 uh, price of Zen. And, and we're getting more, more uh, you know, some concerns and I think very thoughtful uh, questions from community members of how does this impact us? Like, what does it mean? What does a $4 uh, Zen mean for us as a project? Well, it, it's not good. Uh, that's for sure. I mean, it would be better off at a higher Zen price. Uh, and just practically what it means is that as a project, we're taking in about $172,000 per month. Which, you know, it could be seen as a huge number, but I'll tell you, it is well below our outflows as a project. So we have some very aggressive technology development, very aggressive, you know, product development, very aggressive everything, basically, um, to satisfy strategic objectives that we defined earlier in the year. And I can say even earlier when we launched the project and just we're, we're, we're basically our income is under that. Now, we have no intention of changing the block reward. This is a question from the live stream yesterday. Um, the split right now, I, I think, is appropriate. And I think we need to focus more on kind of value creating activities. Now, we are lucky as a project that Horizon Labs exists. And Horizon Labs has been shouldering an increasing you know, burden for, for the overall ecosystem. Um, so the way that it is right now, we're, we're jointly building the sidechain protocol. And you know, Horizon Labs is doing work that quite frankly, it just isn't being paid for right now. Uh, and hopefully that changes um, because it clearly isn't something that's, that's so sustainable, but we are so close to completion on the sidechain protocol. So we're, we're just powering through on that. We have a commitment as, uh, on the Horizon Lab side to continue and to deliver that, and we will. Um, going beyond alpha, I think Horizon Labs will probably you know, shift its focus to more you know, like company activities, commercial clients, and so forth. Um, you know, if, if payments can't be provided by the foundation. So on the foundation side, we will have to probably consider some austerity measures if, if this is prolonged, but I, I just can't see it. That's why we're not taking any knee-jerk reactions right now. I, I just think, you know, there's so, there are so many good things going on with the project that uh, I just have a hard time seeing this as, uh, you know, a, a prolonged negative environment. That, that said, again, to, to caveat, so Dean doesn't yell at me, not an investment device or anything like that, but I'm, I'm extremely bullish about what we're doing. From a technology perspective, a, a community building perspective, we have a pretty awesome ecosystem. So right now, I, I think we're, we're okay, I guess, is the, the bottom line from all that. So I just wanted to give that update to you know, the team here, obviously, but also the broader community. So any questions, guys? Do, how are we doing on the, the mentee questions? Uh, yeah, we've got some questions. So uh, the number one question is uh, it's for you, Rob. How do you envision Zen in a year? How do I envision Zen in a year? Mm -hmm. um, I, I envision us having a very robust, healthy uh, developer system that's kind of centered around our, our sidechain SDK. So I, I think the technology that is going to market is truly a breakthrough. Uh, the, you know, Alberto, with his vision for the technology and the team that's been building it, I think has done a phenomenal job and it's going to open up basically our ecosystem in a way that might be hard to envision right now from you know, the path that we've been on for the last two years. So I'm most excited about that. And I think it's going to, there, there will be many unforeseen positive externalities that come from it. 
Thank you, Rob. The next question is, what are the key advantages of the Zen Sidechain's protocol over its competitors? Oh, that's a good one. Alberta, I, I don't know if you want to field that yourself. Otherwise, I, I definitely have ideas as well. Please, Rob. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> please. No, I, I mean, so the biggest one is that this is truly an unfederated or decentralized uh, sidechain system. So it's meant so that anyone in the world can, can send a special type of transaction to initialize a sidechain. Uh, and then from there, they can do whatever they want with it. They can kind of extend the sidechain in an application-specific environment or whatnot. Uh, so it's, I, I would say that's the biggest competitive or the biggest differentiator from the technology side. And then, of course, the, there will be a whole bunch of like, really innovative ways of doing security on such a system. But it, it fits in more holistically into our, our current system in a way where now we have something really productive for our very large, massive, you know, largest in the industry node network to, to do productive things. Um, so we've built out this large infrastructure for a reason. And that reason was always, you know, not to lock up coin supply, but to actually do productive things and to have a lot of, you know, high quality machines on our network. The thing that we're going to have them do now is run this, this hub and spoke architecture with, with the main chain side chain systems. And, and, you know, from there, the tools that we're, we're going to be delivering to the community will make it easy to deploy and then easy to build on, relatively speaking, of course. Anything that I missed on that, Alberto? Mm, I think that was everything. Just maybe one, one other small thing is that uh, the, the system is designed to be uh, consensus agnostic. So on the protocol is totally consensus agnostic. So in the sidechain, you can use any kind of consensus that you want. So, uh, and this, let me say, uh, gives a lot of more flexibility. Um, you can have, let me say, sidechains that require um, specific consensus, maybe, maybe even not uh, decentralized, and some other that uh, require a totally decentralized consensus and uh, with no trusted party. Yet. And as you said, uh, the fact that uh, the, the, the transfer and, um, um, <clears throat> and let me say, uh, validation of the cross-chain transfers uh, are totally decentralized too. So yes, these uh, are the main advantages that uh, we can see, I mean, compared to other competitors. That's such a huge point. Thank you, Alberto. <laughs> Thank you. And then the last one is, what would be the first sidechain to be deployed? What will be the first one or when? What will be the first what? sidechain to be deployed? Ah, uh, well, a nice generic one, <laughs> but um, going beyond that, so actually this does come into a resource, a resource uh, question, you know, just because we are so squeezed right now, uh, resource-wise, and we have two organizations working on this. So on the ZBF side, the, the Zen Blockchain Foundation side, my vision was to, to push very quickly into more decentralization, and we had two side chains that were really uh, meant to decentralize our system even further, significantly. One was the the treasury voting system. So we can have the community directly decide how resources are allocated. Uh, and the other was actually um, automating node tracking and payments on a side chain. So these were two really important kind of infrastructure um, related side chains. Now, it, these will take a lot of resources and, and R&D, despite the fact that we have a prototype, you know, from early work with IOHK on treasury, uh, we still need to put significantly more thought into that. Um, and on the commercial side, so say the Horizon Lab side, where we're looking at a couple of working with some clients right now to solve some real business problems on sidechains. Um, so one, one is in, or I guess uh, they're, they're both in the digital invoicing uh, space, uh, one on more record keeping and management and the other one uh, more in an auction environment. So those, are, those would be the, at least the first set of sidechains that we're looking at. Now, we hope that we're, we're, we are opening the system to the world. So we hope that other developers and businesses come on and you know, blow us away with all of the amazing things that they do. But th that's what our two organizations are working on. Thank you, Rob. That's it. Those are the top three questions. Cool. Thank you very much, Lucy. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And
hosts are emceeing it as usual. And uh, guys, we'll see you again in a week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>